An interesting passage of readings on this glorious morning as we gather in darkness. I think you're right, John. I don't think there's going to be a sunrise this morning. But trust me, the sun is still back there. Even behind those dark clouds rolling in with the weather that's coming, Christ is risen. I like that. Call and response. But this passage of Scripture from John, so many things in it that are just very interesting. There's the first part where Mary comes to the tomb, right? She comes to the tomb, and in John's Gospel, she comes to the tomb under the cover of darkness. Unlike the Synoptic Gospels, the other three Gospels, where where the women come to the tomb at dawn. They come in the light. But Mary has to come in darkness to the tomb. And she sees that the stone is rolled away. And before she can actually go into the tomb, she runs back to tell Peter and the disciple that Jesus loves, that they've taken our Lord away. Now how does she know that the body is not there? It'd be like me getting to the doors here and seeing the doors are shut, and then going over here and running through the other door to go tell Carrie that something's missing from behind those, well of course those doors are glass, so I can see through them, but... She couldn't see in the tomb. She had no idea if Jesus was there or not. She merely saw that the stone had been rolled away and she decided that something was wrong. So whatever it was, she went back and she told Peter and John. And Peter and John come running. And they see. See, it's interesting. There's 20 verses here and the word to see is used seven times. And in four verses later, when Mary is talking to the angels and to Jesus, the word to weep is used four times in four verses. She's very distraught. But there's a lot of people in this passage seeing things that we really don't know what we're seeing. She saw the stone rolled away and went to give a report. I wonder what the stone is in our lives. It gets in the way of us actually telling people about Jesus. But for me, the most interesting aspect of this passage, this resurrection narrative, is not the stone. It's not the fact that the disciples run into the tomb, see it empty, and then go home. They go home. And they do nothing, according to John. They just walk away from the tomb, knowing that he's not there. Then Mary, standing at the tomb, weeping and crying, distraught because her Lord has been taken from her, looks in finally. Sees two angels. They ask her why she's weeping. She turns around and sees a man who she assumes is a gardener because they are in a garden. Makes sense that a gardener would be in the garden. It also makes sense that they would be in a garden on the day of the new creation. Brings us back to the beginning of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And in all of creation, the Word helped create. Takes us back to the beginning in Genesis. That in the garden, God created all of these things and placed all of these things there. The old creation meets the new creation in the garden. And Mary sees this man and asks, where have you taken him? He speaks to her and he doesn't, she doesn't know who, who he is. Have you ever met an acquaintance that you have met after a long period of time of not seeing them and And you see them, and you don't really know who they are, and they speak to you, and you have no idea who they are, and then they call you by name. They call you by name. Mary is distraught. She's crying. She's racked with emotions of what is going on and how in the world things could get any worse. They just went from this horrific day of Christ dying on a cross 
and now she's come two days later to pay respects over his body, and she can't find him. And she asks the man who she assumes works in this place where, what he's done with the body, and, and not knowing who he is until he finally looks at her in the eyes and he calls her by name. He says, Mary. Just like Jesus did to the blind man in chapters 9 and 10, speaking to him when he could not see. Just like Jesus did to Lazarus at the tomb. Remember the story of Lazarus? How he died? And four days later, Jesus went with his disciples and stood at the tomb and said, oh, roll the stone away. And he stood there and Lazarus didn't come out. When did Lazarus come out? When Jesus said, Lazarus, come out. He called him by name. And I guarantee you that right now, Jesus is calling each and every one of you by name. Because the resurrection is not a look into the past or an ending. The resurrection is an invitation into a world that we only can begin to imagine of what is going to happen. The resurrection is an invitation into a life that God has given to each and every one of us. The resurrection is an invitation in the fact that Jesus calls each and every one of us by name. To go into the world and to spread forth his love. The disciples may not have understood it and we may not understand it. But God calls each and every one of us by name to go into the world. To share his love. A love that death cannot hold. A love that hell cannot contain. A love so deep that Christ died for you. To show us how much God loves you. And then he calls you by name. To go with him. To share that love with the rest of the world. So listen. And hear our teacher. Call you by name. And send you out into a life. That this cross invites you to go into. A life beyond your wildest imagination. A life filled with love and joy, to share that love and joy with everyone that you come in contact with. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen.